What is better than this? Eight teams enter with a dream to win the ACC. Only one will be crowned champion. Picks out Ward. No angle! And yet scores! What a move! Breaking ankles, curling around the crease and scoring. Stings the corner! Shoma delivers! Boston College, just too much. Magic strikes again. What a semifinal we've got set up. Boston College, Notre Dame, Syracuse, and North Carolina. You're watching the ACC Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Ally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Our first semifinal, the top-seeded Boston College Eagles taking on the number five seed, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Four teams all enter, dreaming of an ACC championship. Only two will remain alive after today. Hi, everybody. Alongside the Hall of Famer, she and Stanwick Birch. I'm Jay Alter. We'll be joined by Dana Boyle on the field in just a moment. She and you want to talk about star power. This game has it. Eight ACC first teamers about to take the field. And they often could make their name made for a first team All-American towards the end of this season. So much talent between these two programs. And just three weeks ago, we were treated to an awesome game. Boston College stormed back against Notre Dame. Five goals in the fourth quarter. Came away with the victory. Notre Dame has won since that loss, though. So it should be a great battle today. Well, you know, the iron looking for revenge in this semifinal going to be tough to do because this Boston College team has talent all over the field top to bottom BC is loaded and it starts defensively Sydney scales one of the best players on the field she can do defensively she can also score got her first goal of the season Cassidy Weeks a two-way midfielder McKenna Davis she's got the vision on this team to distribute the ball Bell Smith makes plays all over the field and then you've got Jen Medjid leading the team in goals strengths all over the field and that's what makes BC so dangerous well, we mentioned those eight all ACC first teamers about to take the field. Five of them showed up big for BC in that quarterfinal win against Duke and Dana. Notre Dame had their top talent show up in the quarterfinal too. They sure did, Jay. They came in hot against Virginia. They met in the regular season and Virginia got their number in that one, but Notre Dame, they came out firing five different goal scores. And a big part of that is that three-headed monster that we always talk about with Jackie Wolak, Madison Ahern, and Choma. Jackie Wolak, she's one big muscle. You gotta throw the whole defense at her to stop her. So strong, such a downhill dodger. And then Casey Choma, she really is the heartbeat of this team for Notre Dame. I love the way that they get each other involved. Madison Ahern works so well around the crease that you got to guard them and they're a triple threat. They can dodge, they can pass, they can feed. And this is going to be quite the tall task, Jay, for Boston College defensively. How do you stop them? That'll be tough to do. Those big three combined for 11 goals in that win against Virginia. Chris Halfpenny, this could be a pivotal win for her program. Notre Dame has never been to an ACC championship final. Looking for a full four quarters, Chris Halfpenny today. Acacia Walker won the national championship in 2021, but her Eagles team have never won the ACC championship. So two teams trying to make program history this week in Charlotte. We are underway in semifinal number one. The draw control pivotal in Notre Dame wins the opener. This is an Irish offense that we talked about. It's a three-headed monster that has really come alive during the stretch of this season. Notre Dame has won seven of their last eight. That lone loss to this Boston College team, so a great chance to avenge that loss today and advance to the final. Huge opportunity for both these teams. And already, Boston College starting out the face guard on Jackie Wolak, number 23 in blue, trying to deny her the ball. Do you like that move? I think it's smart. I mean, Wolak started off super hot in the quarterfinal game and really got off scoring, got a ton of goals in that first half. So you try to deny her the ball. We'll see how Notre Dame opts to use her. When you're being face guard, either sometimes teams try to pull you out of the play so it opens up defensively, or often they will try to get you the ball. She's got it now. Great feed from Wolak, and Ahern opens the scoring. Madison Ahern left alone on the doorstep, and she makes BC pay. Excellent first possession for Notre Dame. They win the draw control, they get settled on offense, 
and then the defender just drops off a wall that leaves her wide open. Look at her vision. Up top of the 12 meter, finds Madison Ahern right on the doorstep of the crease. She's able to catch that, assess the cage, and finish for the first score of the game. 56th goal this season for Madison Ahern as a senior. And that's a frustrating first defensive possession for Boston College because you go to the face guard to make sure Jackie Wolak doesn't beat you, and she does. She gets that assist on a fantastic pass. I'm not sure why. I don't know if there was a miscommunication there because they were marking her tightly to trying to deny her the ball, and then all of a sudden they allowed her the room. Now, she's not a threat when she's got the ball at the 12 meter, but she was able to have the vision to send it down to a Hearn. I think it just had the whole defense out of sorts. Yeah, whole call. Boston College ball. A 13 and three regular season for the Eagles and coming off that win against Duke in the quarterfinals. This Eagles offense, they we touched on all the talent they have. It's so difficult to match up because they have such depth that can beat you. If you're Notre Dame defensively, what do you try and key in on? You really want to make sure watch the passing game because Basie does an excellent job creating space. You need the players cutting through, creating pass to Cage. You want to make sure your communication is on point, talking the slides, helping defense. But they are very unselfish and they work the ball around really well. So you want to make sure really that you lock in all the people adjacent to the ball so they're not able to dish and dump easily. Look at how quickly they're sending that second slide. Very aggressive defensively to start this game, Notre Dame. McKenna Davis trying to break it down, has a step but whizzed it wide. She's a very talented lefty, can score as well as feed. Scored the game winner in the regular season finale against Syracuse that gave Boston College the number one seed in this tournament. Here's Belle Smith, nobody picked her up. Great save, Lily Callahan bails out the Notre Dame defense to deny Belle Smith. Nice first save, Callahan just hugged that pipe. Would have loved to see Belle Smith switch to her left hand and shoot it around her. One of the things Acacia Walker from BC was talking about was they want to have a fast start. Felt that they started too slow against Notre Dame. It's an excellent turnover in the midfield. Relentless ride by Martello. Now she has it attacking. Sending it back to Weeks, who pulls it out. Cassidy Weeks, a two-way midfielder, all-ACC first-teamer for Boston College. Here, see an off-ball foul. Behind the cage. Officials get everyone set up properly. Here's Medjit in attack mode, a hard foul in the eight meter. Medjit's so efficient with her shooting. Let's take a look as Medjit goes to cage hard. You see the extension of her arms, almost gets in the neck area as well. She'll be on that inside hash mark. Medjid, the leading scorer for this Boston College team. Trying to equalize. Just missed it. Off the pipe. Inches away from a tying goal. And now here comes Notre Dame the other way. A successful clear, which is important. You don't want to give this Eagles team extra possessions. And that's one of the things that Notre Dame has been working on. They're an aggressive team, but they don't want to send teams to the eight meters. So be careful with the fouling. Very veteran Notre Dame team that Chris Halfpenny has. They came to South Bend 
to do what teams before them could not, win an ACC championship. They've never even made the finals, so that's the first step. But a tall task to try and take out the number one overall seed of this tournament. Here's Hannah Dorney. Del Smith all over Dorney. Look at her go. She just can hunt the ball down. She's gonna be whistled for the foul there. I like the aggressiveness, though, of Bell Smith. Shot clock under 15. Dorney. <laughs> Kelly Dennis, relentless, got a good look, just couldn't finish it. Shot clock at five. Fired in front, Dolce got a piece of it. The freshman, Shea Dolce, she's come in to this season and really turned it around for Boston College, and it's big saves like that that are the reason why. Just a freshman, number one goalie recruit out of the freshman class, started the last 10 games. He's gotten a ton of experience. We're gonna hear a hard whistle here, and this is gonna be a yellow card awarded. So the official's calling this early, the cross check into the body. MK Darty is going to be sidelined up to two minutes. Big opportunity for Boston College right now. It's outside the eight meter. So Cassidy Weeks will have the ball, but look for her to set up something. So watch the extension of the arms defensively. That's into the body. You're not supposed to push or displace your opponent with the shaft or your stick. It's a safety call. So Boston College player up. Up to two minutes, it is releasable on a goal. Davis, terrific feed. Callahan stuffed it on the doorstep. That's her second save, and both have been from in close. Beautiful save. I don't think Boston College could have drawn that up any better. Excellent passing, making the defense shift, and Callahan just is so strong and gets a clear out. And Lily Callahan told me on Wednesday during the quarterfinal game, she imagined saving the ball like it's a beach ball, not a lacrosse ball. So it worked out for her that time. Those goalies can come up the, the weirdest ways to kind of prepare themselves. But I, I, mean, I think that's true. Oftentimes when the ball, you can sometimes when goalies are not seeing it. So it's great to have those techniques where you can really zone in, think that the ball is bigger. You can really see it in. She's seeing it well early in this game. And you got to find a way to mentally reset yourself because the team is going to score. The scores have been high. It's a fast game, but I, I love her mentality. And she's a young keeper. She didn't get a lot of time last year under playing behind Bridget Dehan. Got to be able to reset and forget. Now Callahan came up huge in the quarterfinal. Four saves in that fourth quarter after she struggled in the opening three. Hung on to that lead for Notre Dame. Still a player down. Here's Choma trying to score shorthanded. Dolce to the rescue. Both of these goalies dialed in early. Strong stops. Choma right on the doorstep there. I, she did throw in a fake there, but went high to high. So want to make sure you're seeing the space. Fed ahead to Weeks. Here's Cassidy Weeks. Another save. Lily Callahan on fire to start this semifinal. Showdown on the goalies now. That is her third save, and really all of them you don't expect her to make. No, I mean, these are opportunities where the attackers have to finish. So both sides just need to take the extra second. Boston College 0 for 5 in their shooting so far, and that was the area of concern for Acacia Walker after this first game. Didn't think they shot well. Now, we've seen what Boston College has done all season long. They can flip the switch and turn things up, and they've had some epic comebacks. One in particular was against this Notre Dame team just three weeks ago. So Notre Dame successfully clearing the player down situation. Back to even strength. A 1-0 lead. Both goalies, an outstanding start to this semifinal at Charlotte. We expect two extremely competitive games in our ACC Championship semifinals. The officials discussing whether the shot clock should be reset or not. Shot clock is reset on a goalie save or a, or a shot on cage or a post. Yeah, 
Here's a look. Did Dolce get a piece of this? Let's take a look. Does it hit Dolce or the cage? Doesn't look like it hits Dolce. Does it hit a net, the net? I don't think it made contact, so it should be no reset. And the officials seem to agree. 5-7. Reset. Oh, it is being reset. We're hearing on the field it should be reset to, I believe, 57 seconds. Okay, so if it made, if it was a shot on goal, it would be reset. So officials getting that right. So a, a, lo a lot of time now on this clock offensively for Notre Dame. M.K. Doherty, who just got the yellow card, back on the field. Madison Ahern, she's got the lone goal in this first quarter. Pulls it out. Now in attack mode. Great defense from Boston College. PC handling the one-on-one -on -one matchups really well. They're gonna be whistled for a foul. I like their one-on-one -on -one defense. It's too clogged offens offensively, though, for Notre Dame. They've got to cut through clear space. Here's Choma curling around the cage. Dolce got a piece of it. Another save from the freshman goalkeeper, Shea Dolce. Boy, she has come in and made a difference. Dolce started this season backing up Rachel Hall, who won Boston College the national championship in 2021. Tough to display such a proven starter, but she has just proven it game in and game out, continues to improve, and she's playing the best lacrosse of the season at the right time. Playing with a lot of confidence, and Acacia Walker telling us that as a coach that they've handled these two goalies. They've got two strong goalies. At any time, Rachel Hall could go in. She's been an excellent supporter of Dolce. She has a national championship experience, so it's excellent when you have two goalies that really work well together, feel supported, and you're playing no mind games. She said, we're being completely open and honest. Right now, Hall understands that Dolce is our starter, but at any moment, we, we might have to utilize both of them. Andrea Reynolds. Not much space against this Notre Dame defense. Boston College still scoreless as we near four minutes left in this opening quarter. Only one goal, and we've seen six saves. There's the breakthrough. Jen Medjid, the Eagles' leading scorer, finally beats Callahan. Medjid takes the patience that was needed to score that goal, catches it in a crowd of pressure. She is so calm and composed. She's frequently being guarded by the best defender on the other team. She's able to get her stick free and finish. One of the huge reasons she's put up almost 70 goals this season. Smith gets it inside to Medjid with the roll dodge and score. We've got it knotted up at one. We've seen 11 shots in this opening quarter, Dana, but only two goals. These goalies are locked in. Jay, goalie world is alive and well. So early in this game, relatively inexperienced in terms of minutes played in college, but they are coming alive. Shea Dolce has been amazing for this Boston College team. And then Lily Callahan, just that leader back there, such a tall body they both are, which presents a different angle if you're a shooter. Yeah, Lily Callahan stands at six foot. Shea Dolce at five foot ten. So really tough to squeeze it by those large frames. It's great when you have a good presence in goal, and they really they I like the way they present themselves in cage. They hug the pipes nicely. They play the angles very well. It's been a relatively clean game as well. Only one turnover. You just get the feeling early in game, Sheehan, there's just not going to be too much to separate these teams today. So similar when you really look at how they have so many stars offensively. 
Both goalies playing really well. Excellent pick here. Courtney Weeks. You know, really similar on paper. And then when you look at the regular season game, just a one goal win by Boston College. Notre Dame was in control for much of that game. And then BC scored five straight goals in the fourth quarter to come back and win that one. And Notre Dame led that game 11 to 8 with four minutes and 20 seconds left in it. And Boston College wins 12-11. Does that get into the psyche at all if you're Notre Dame? I think you realize, you remember that you had that game and you should have won it when you look back at that tape. Like, what happened? We were in control and then Boston College came storming back. So I think you just learn from it. Both knowing that both these teams, BC came away with the win. Notre Dame easily could have won the game as well. So it could be anyone's game today. Here's Martello, double team, knocked away. Bell Smith gathers and draws the foul. Hard foul on Bell Smith. She'll get possession of the ball. Smith fighting through. Squeezes it by Callahan. Bell Smith didn't have much room, but got it to go. Such a tough player, Bell Smith. She does it all. She can play defense, she can play offense, she makes impact plays all over the field. This starts with the takeaway, what Notre Dame trying to clear the ball. Number six, Courtney Weeks denies that possession and able to bring it down here. Watch the pressure here. The real takes a hard foul from Bell Smith. Her little stutter step is able to split right through the double team, get her hands free. Big time goal. Bell Smith from West Hampton Beach in New York. Not necessarily a lacrosse hotbed, but she shined there. Three sport athlete, two time All American, was the ACC Rookie of the Year her freshman year. She's one of those players, we've talked about it this year. The Twaraton conversation is going to be very interesting. It's whittled down to 25 people. She's on that list. I think her play in the quarterfinal game is inserting her to be really in the conversation of who's going to be in that top five. Well, after Boston College started this game, missing their first five shots, the Eagles have scored on their last two in just a minute and 35 seconds. Double team, excellent. Oh, they're going to call a push on Boston College. Crowd's not liking that call. Dana, you're over there on that Boston College bench. They didn't seem too happy with that call. Specifically, Acacia Walker, not happy with the call. She wants them to let the officials to let them play a little bit. What about on the Notre Dame side? What are you noticing, Dana? Coming out of that timeout, Chris Halfpenny said, cut it with the fancy stuff. One dodge, one fake. You don't need six, but you do have to move the goalie. She wants to cut it with the fancy stuff. Just run our flow offense. Seems like they're playing a little tight offensively. You, they need that extra second, right? Dana, right? They're, a lot of their shots are low angle. Shea Dolce is hot. They've shot to make her hot. She's hugging the pipe. You have to move her. They need one more step to the inside. And when they go to the inside, they're going to increase their angle or they're going to get fouled. So they actually they need another second out there. Stop rushing things offensively. Well, scoring has not been an issue for either of these teams over the course of the regular season. You know, eight all ACC first teamers for Notre Dame, a big three of Ahern, Wolak, and Choma that have been quieted in this opening quarter. We have a whistle with about a minute left in the opening 15 minutes. Resetting the shot clock to 90. It was an offsides call. Chris Halfpenny talking with her captain, Casey Choma. Halfpenny called the junior the heartbeat of this program. So great when you have a leader on the field you can rely on. And she, everyone has so much respect for her. Her coach has so much trust in her, or a huge leader by her play and what she says.
Belle Smith has been active in this first quarter. Playing both ways, she's made a real impact. And as the last score that gave Boston College the lead. Smith looking for it again. They find her. She goes low. Saved by Callahan. What a stop. That's four saves in this first quarter. Both goalies just seeing the shots and shoot shooters so well, positioning themselves. Both goalies with four saves in this first quarter. Dolce allowed a goal on the opening shot, but it's been Stonewaller sits. Oh, and a yellow card comes out. Jen Medjit, so the leading goal scorer for Boston College, will be awarded a yellow card. She'll be sidelined for up to two minutes. This is important for her. She's got a rain in her place. So she gets the defensive foul with the cross check. Because as a shooter, you have to be aware of your stick at all times when you're shooting and make sure you don't make contact with the defense. So she's going to have to take an extra second to make sure she's really being safe. They need her in this game. Two yellow cards, you're removed from the game. So Medjid, a yellow card. Notre Dame will go player up to start this second quarter. What a fun start to our ACC championship semifinal. Just getting started on what should be a great day in Charlotte. ACC Women's Lacrosse Championship is presented by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Start of the second quarter here at the ACC Women's Lacrosse Championship semifinal presented by Ally. She and Stanwick Birch, Jay Alter with you. The offense taking a little time to get going. And this is a good for Boston College. Their top scorer, Jen Medjid, at the end of that first quarter, that's a yellow card. That looked even worse when it was slowed down there. You, you, you could see the extension of the arms. You make contact in the neck area. No doubt about it. Excellent call by the officiating crew. That's a yellow card. Medjo will be out for up to two minutes. It's releasable on a Notre Dame score. Acacia Walker still getting an explanation, but that's an easy call. If Acacia saw the replay that we just saw, that's a yellow card every time. That's a yellow card every time, and the, there's a fine line. So we, we heard, you know, some Dana's reporting that the, play, the coaches want the officials to let them play, but you also have to do it safely. So you can't, the head and neck area, that's going to be an automatic yellow card. There is going to be some contact. I mean, people say lacrosse, women's lacrosse is not a contact sport. There is a lot of contact in the sport, but it's got to be safe, and you want to just call it evenly. So we've seen a cross check called against MK Darty for Notre Dame. BC's now got, got a yellow card for it, so the players now need to adjust. This is the way it's going to be called. Don't do the extension of the arms and the body. Don't go into the head and neck area. Keep it clean, play defense with your feet, line your stick up, but you don't need to push. Only equipment being worn by these players is just the goggles. It's a big point of emphasis to rein in the cross checks this year. And because it came right at the end of the first quarter, Notre Dame starts with the ball, a player up. So Notre Dame, there will be no draw control. It'll be Notre Dame possession. For two minutes, Boston College, a player down. This could be exactly what you need if you're Notre Dame, she and you struggled to find your footing offensively, lacked flow against this Boston College defense. Maybe player up can wake you up a bit. One less player defensively on the field. Great opportunity to score. The shot clock is still in effect, so it just it started at 90 seconds. So with the two minute penalty, just 90 seconds on the shot clock. You want to work the ball around. So when you are up a player, let the ball do the work, get the defense shifting, find that open person, and the open person's got to present themselves in a place to receive the ball. Oftentimes they get confused and get, get lost in the mix. It's hard to identify who that is. You got to present yourself in a place to score. Notre Dame has missed their last five shots. Make it six. Trying to find a breakthrough, player up. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Still a minute left to the player up. A 
Well, because the Irish are a player up, they don't have Wolak in a face guard, and yet they couldn't get it to 23 in blue. Shea Baker, the star freshman, she's emerging on this Eagles defense. A huge takeaway there. Making plays, I mean, what a boost. When you're down a player and you can come up with a turnover, what a takeaway behind the cage. I almost think that in the white uniforms, Baker was almost camouflaged with the back of the net. She exploded from behind the crease, came up with possession. So BC will look to try to kill this penalty, get to even strength. Dana, you were in that Notre Dame huddle. What did you hear from Chris Halfpenny? It was pretty simple. She was positive, but she said, why aren't we having fun? The biggest difference in that Virginia game, when they came out to a 9-3 lead, they were playing loose, they were having fun. Worry less about the technicality and just have fun and play loose. It makes a big difference. I like the way she's trying to manage the emotions, though, because this game is tight. I like that, because they have looked very tight. Yes. We've seen any offensively need to take that extra second. You want to have fun, play loose, play confident. You've got a, a body of a season of work, and you do it. You want to smile, enjoy the moment, and when you relax, that's when all the connections can happen. Boston College back to full strength. Courtney Weeks trying to regather. It'll stay Eagles ball. Shot clock down to 10. Boston College has to hurry. Too much of a force trying to get that inside. Shot clock violation, so Notre Dame ball. Notre Dame has missed their last seven shots. Low on confidence right now when it comes to shooting. You're going against a hot goalie in Shea Dolce, but what can you do to break through, Shan? I'd like to see Jackie Wolak with the ball. Number 23 in blue. She was so strong in the UVA win. She has excellent speed. She can blow, blow by her matchup. I think they need to isolate her up top, let her go to work. Double team, stole it away. Bell Smith again. And now Boston College can move in transition. Hunter Roman, plenty of turf in front of her. Courtney Weeks weaving through, feeds it back. Easy finish. Jen Medjid. The Bell Smith turnover. Leads to a Jen Medjid goal. That's Boston College lacrosse. Classic defense to offense. Love the patience of Courtney Weeks there. She had the ability to take that shot. I thought she was going to go with it. But the better shot was the wide open cage when she throws that out to Jen Medjid. 70th goal of the season, and it might be the easiest. On the defensive end, Bell Smith making plays. Perfect double team, the takeaway. I thought she had the shot there. Instead, Weeks goes for the, the assist. And Jen Medjid able to finish on the doorstep. Beautiful play. Really hard for Lily Callahan to make that save. She was matched up perfectly with Courtney Weeks, which I think is why she didn't end up taking that shot. And when she goes behind the cage, you've got to follow her as a goalkeeper, and then the pass goes in front, and then you need to figure out who has the ball now and how do I get myself in position. Now, Sheen, what I love most about Jen Medjid is that she's really quiet and humble off the field, but I love the way she asserts herself on the field. It's so fun to watch. Such a key part of this offense for Boston College. 14 goals her freshman year and just have continued to emerge as a scorer now with 80 goals on the season. It's 70 goals on the season, but she'll be at 80, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe That's this good. tournament. Yes. Boston College with all the momentum right now. Scales keeps it in play, digs it out. Three Notre Dame defenders in on Sydney Scales. She continues to find a way. Love the pressure defensively, both these teams. They're really putting pressure on the ride. However, we've seen two yellow cards already awarded this game. They want to make sure they play with calm and composed, especially the fouls in the midfield. No one's in a position to score from out here. You've got to rein the defensive play because these calls could escalate. Here's Medjid. 
Already two goals today. Tried to spin through it. Lost the ball. Well, Notre Dame has struggled in settled play. Maybe they get something in transition. Up ahead, Shoma. What a save! Shea Dolce! Wow! You can see she's pumped up. And that one had to hurt. She's shaking out her legs in cage, Dolce. Here we go. Here we go. Notre Dame scoreless now for the last 18 minutes in scoring that opening goal. They're shooting 0 for 8 during that scoreless streak with four turnovers. Something has to change offensively for the Irish. Good news is they're getting the shots off. That's a, one of the hardest battles if you're not getting shot attempts. They've got the shots attempts. Now they need to figure out ways to finish. BC forcing them outside to lower angles. They're getting great looks. I mean, Choma buries that. 99 times out of 100, just took a spectacular save from Shea Dolce. And now Dolce will be called in to make another stop here on a free position. Eight meter opportunity coming for Choma. The heartbeat of this Notre Dame team, the leader on the field, Choma! Much needed! Casey Choma delivers after nearly 19 minutes scoreless. Casey Choma breaks through. 57th goal this season. These goalies are making it hard for the offenses to get on the scoreboard. Excellent save here off the thigh. Dolce, the freshman, turns that one away, but Choma comes in here. She has a slight dip with her head. That's a deception needed coming off the eight meter. You either do need to do a body fake or a stick fake. Good angle for a right-handed player. She explodes off the mark. And when you're having a hard time finishing, shooting from the field, eight meter shots can be your best friend. You get there, play is stopped. You've got defenders four meters away from you. And she, and it's the second chance opportunities that Chris Halfpenny said. When we can get those second chance opportunities in the regular season, she felt like it really gave them that momentum. You might not be scoring from the field, but hey, hit the eight meter. Such an important aspect of the women's game are those eight meter shots. If teams are gonna foul and put you on the eight meter, whether it's individual fouls into the body, three seconds or shooting space. You wanna make sure you cash in on those attempts. Sheehan, are you surprised it's so low scoring? Really surprised. I mean, I'm super impressed with both goalkeepers, which it's nice seeing them shine in cage. Both have had excellent seasons. Nine combined saves, only five goals in this first half. Yeah, Two high-powered offenses, too. The offenses for all of them, for both teams, have so many players that can score and put up big numbers. Here's Cassidy Weeks. Can't get free. Callahan chasing after it. Kept in. Great job by Annabelle Hasselback. Oh, no, they say she was on the line. Yeah, that was a close ground ball right on the end line. And now Ali McHugh will clear. <laughs> Jackie Wolak still without a shot for Notre Dame. That has to change. You want to be able to score in case she is taken out of the game or not having a good day, but you want to have her involved in the offense. This Notre Dame team is better when Wolak is involved. She's an excellent distributor and finisher. Wolak had four goals in the win against Virginia on Wednesday in the quarterfinal. A big reason why Notre Dame is even in this semifinal. Here she is with it. Wolak on the move. for the ground ball. Kelly Dennis trying to shield herself. 
Notre Dame stays on possession. Not a lot of time, though. Shot clock runs under 15. Seven seconds to shoot. Well, this will be an eight meter for Notre Dame with four seconds left on the shot clock. Calling a hold. We'll see if BC can convert on this second eight meter opportunity. And it's MK Doherty who steps up to take it from straight away. One on one with Dolce who already has five saves to her name today. Charges in, Dolce makes another stop. That resets the shot clock and Notre Dame gets the rebound. So this is a second chance opportunity for the Irish. Getting those rebounds, especially as the shot clock winds down is really huge offensively. You're getting, the defense starts to get tired. They've got to reset again. Important to have patience and also realize occupy the off ball tenders are going to get, defenders are going to get tired. Ahern goes lefty, Dolce makes the save again. Seven saves for Shea Dolce, a star being born in this semifinal. Dolce part of the all freshman team of the ACC. A phenomenal freshman who is stating her case to be one of the best goalies in this league. Take a look at the scene. Watch it, Dolce stance. Takes up so much room in cage, not only with her height, but also positioning. What a save. Great hustle by Doherty. And here's Jackie Wolak. Chris Halfpenny taking a timeout. 525 remaining in this second half. Notre Dame still trying to find their flow offensively. Down a goal. Well, a star being born in the ACC semifinal. Check out the freshman, Shea Dolce. Seven saves Dana. She's been spectacular. Unreal for this Boston College squad. She didn't even start at the beginning of the season, but has come in, accepted the job, and has just really led this Boston College defense. She's the shepherd in there. She gets things started in transition, and I was just in that huddle with Boston College, and she said, we need to be better on the clear, and that is not on Shea. Our middies got to come back in transition and help our goalkeeper out. Now, Boston College on an eight-game winning streak. Shea Dolce has been in goal for all of those wins. Acacia Walker telling us, you throw in a freshman, and it really just changed the trajectory of our season. She said after the Denver loss, knew she really needed to make a change. Dolce has come in and provided that spark. Only two goals against today. She's been so difficult to break down seven saves. The freshman out of Darien, Connecticut. Spoke with her before the Syracuse game, the regular season finale, and she said she was in the exact same position when she was a freshman at Darien High School. They had an established senior goalie that she came in, won the job, and they went on to win the state championship. So now trying to do the exact same thing now, Here's a freshman for BC. And it's important, Jay, because you really are directing the defense. So you may be a backup keeper, but you don't know what it feels like to play in back of that defense. So I've been so impressed with the cohesivity on the defensive end. And what can you do, Sheehan, to break her down? I know she's making great saves, but as an attacker, you know there's always a way to get into the back of the net. You need to slow down time. So you just have to make sure you throw in the extra fakes, see the space. The low angle shots aren't working. Sometimes as a shooter, you're feeling it, and you can shoot from goal line extended. Not working today. They're holding the angles perfectly. Get to the inside and really shoot to space. She takes a wide stance with her legs. She's trying to bait you to shoot where, you, where she wants you to shoot. You need to direct the traffic and make her move. Sydney Scales showing why she's a first team all ACC defender. Running in transition, Callahan got it with her foot, but followed up, Martello in perfect position to finish it, hit after the goal. BC player really slow to come up. Andrea Reynolds, who's been so key in Boston College's wins. Excellent on the draw circle. Let's take a look at this. So this, Sydney Scales with the bat down. 
leads the team and cause turnovers. Great transition. Gets this down to Reynolds with a head of steam. And then Kayla Martello is able to come with a second chance. Can't see the foul here. Let's take a look at this well, again. You see Reynolds collide with Julia Carr before Martello was able to follow up and score. Reynolds colliding with the sophomore Julia Carr. Martello just great opportunity, the awareness to scoop and score so quickly like that. The offense often has advantage when those second chance opportunities, because as a de defender, you're trying to figure out where your player is. Who are you marking up with? Who are you guarding? The offensive player is just looking for the ball. So Martello scoops that up. She's been really fun to watch. Well, good to see Reynolds stay out there. Although now subbing off. Looks like she'll be okay to continue, though. It's always great when they run off on their own accord. Reynolds has gotten a lot of play time when Holly Schleicher was injured for the Eagles. Been a big presence on the, getting the draw control wins. You know, both of these teams, Sheehan, have struggled to score in settled play. Even that goal by Boston College, it's coming in transition. Just feels on both ends, just very tight, difficult to break down both defenses in this first half. And credit that to the goal goalkeeping play. Dolce, seven saves, Callahan with five saves for Notre Dame. Even Callahan, she made the first save. It just bounced perfectly to Martello, who fired it home. Here's Madison Ahern. She had the first goal for Notre Dame, been quiet since. Shoma has a step, can't use it. In Boston College, I thought they might have been closest to the ball there instead awarded to Notre Dame. Here's Wolak. She's been face guarding a lot of this first half. Finally gets the ball and comes up empty. Crease violation. And that was a Boston College sent that slide super early. They did not want Wolak attacking the cage. Everyone surrounding the players for Notre Dame, though, was stagnant. They weren't in a position for Wolak to give them the ball. Can't stand and ball watch. Run down by Martello. Three minutes left to this first half. Boston College doubling up Notre Dame 4-2. Good to see Andrea Reynolds back on the field for Boston College. Bell Smith weaving through, drawing contact, and an eight-meter opportunity coming for Bell Smith. She's really taking control of this game. Whether it's defensively coming up with a turnover, pushing the tempo on offense, she's able to draw this foul. And this again, an extension of the arms and the push. You get placed on the hash mark closest to where the foul occurred. Bell Smith right at the center hash mark. Hash mark, great angle here. You, we can see exactly what she's seeing. Smith today, one goal, one assist to cause turnover. Almost added another, hit the pipe, and then Callahan covered it inches away for making it 5 2. Goals have been hard to come by with these two high powered offenses. Boston College 0 for 2 on free positions in this first half.
Notre Dame desperate for a goal. They need something offensively, and an easy save for Shea Dolce. We'll see how Boston College handles this time of possession left. Will they opt for the final shot? It'd be great for them to go into halftime with a three-goal lead. Under one minute remaining in this first half. Notre Dame has been held to one goal in the last 28 minutes. They scored about a minute into this game and they've only had one since. Just shooting two of 14. The Eagles freshman goalie, Shea Dolce, eight first half saves. Here's Cassidy Weeks, terrific feed, and the goal! The sisters combining, Cassidy Weeks finds Courtney Weeks. That twin connection showing up in the ACC semifinal. Great Boston College offense on display. What sets them apart when things are going well is the extra passes they're able to make. Cassie Weeks bobbles it a bit, she's able to scoop it up and then dish it off to her sister Courtney. And what she does there that's so great, she doesn't stop and catch that. She splits through the double team, increases the angle, gets to space, and look at the release of that shot. It's up high above her head, she fires it down low. Four game scoring streak for the senior Courtney Weeks. Been playing a lot more on offense. They've used her behind the cage, operating from X. Keisha Walker telling us she's the most physical attacker and can really handle the pressure. I mean, how many times do you do that in the backyard and now you get to do it in the ACC Championship semifinal? So fun to be able to play with your sister. You know exactly what they're gonna do. You can give them real feedback, great feedback and not so great feedback and you're, they're able to usually handle it better than you would be telling your friend. Nine seconds, still time for Notre Dame. Irish have to hurry. And that foul will end this first half. Boston College, a 5-2 lead. Eight saves for Shea Dolce, the freshman goalie. And the offense came on late. Courtney Weeks adding a fifth goal to extend the Eagles' lead to three. Notre Dame just hasn't looked in sync offensively. Jackie Wolak has been taken out of the game with the face guard and the early slides. Hasn't let her get a rhythm. I think they're gonna need to make some adjustments offensively to get Ahern and Wolak involved. Let's hear from Boston College head coach Acacia Walker down with Dana. Coach Walker, we were giving the goalies some love. Shea Dolce is playing out of her mind. What she is, is she giving your defense? She's making the saves she needs to make and then she's making the insane saves and that's like, what Shay does in her prime and she's feeling good right now and I love it. It takes a lot of courage to be able to do that and I'm just I'm proud of her. She's keeping us in the game. Offensively goals have been hard to come by. What more do you want to see from your offense? You know we're kind of beating ourselves right now. We have two very strange interceptions that we haven't done all year and then I think we just got to get our, our stick sharp um, and stay spread out. We're shrinking a little bit. So um, again back to the game plan and, and do our thing. Thanks coach. Thank you. Boston College, a three goal lead at halftime. And, and that feels like a five or six goal lead when you're limiting your opponent to only two goals. A really impressive performance from Shea Dolce. Eight saves in her Eagles, up three at the half. We welcome you back to the ACC Women's Lacrosse Championship presented by Ally. Not much scoring in that first half, just outstanding goalkeeping between Boston College and Notre Dame. The top seeded Eagles getting tested, but finally broke through at the end of that first half. As you look at our 
Lacrosse Championship bracket presented by Ally Syracuse in North Carolina still to come right here on ACC Network in the shadow of Charlotte here. And she and time now for Watch This presented by Ally. This Notre Dame deep offense, specifically Jackie Wolak, they were stifled in the first half. Jackie Wolak, the leading point getter for Notre Dame, has not had any many touches of the game. BC operating with a face guard on top of her, closely guarding. The ball has not been in her stick much. She wanted to get it a, a moment when she was open, wasn't able to receive the pass there. You can see a little bit of the frustration. And when she tried to go to work, BC with the early slides, forced her into the crease, and that's a turnover. So a bit of a frustration. No shots of the day for Jackie Wolak. They're going to need to get her involved. They've got to create better spacing. It's too congested inside. She and that's exactly what Chris Halfpenny said. I asked her, how do you get Jackie Wolak involved? And she said, we need to get her the ball, yes, but it's not all on her. It's the movement that has to happen around her. We're a little stagnant, and we're not having fun. She went back to that point that she said in the first half, we need to have fun, we need to play with flair, and our defense is doing a heck of a job. What's fun against going against Dolce and this Boston College defense? That doesn't sound fun to me. They're competing at the highest level. This is the biggest game of a lot of these young players' careers. They're in their, on the, they're trying to make it to the championship game. A win here takes you to the ACC championship, a game that Boston College has never been able to win. And then Acacia Walker is, is used as a carrot for this team. And Notre Dame never made it to the championship. And a conversation she's had with her players, this is our time to shine. One of these programs will have an opportunity to make history on Sunday and win a first ever ACC championship title for their program. Great start for Notre Dame. They win the draw control. They get it to Jackie Wolak, who was starved of the ball in the opening half hour. Wolak in attack mode. Passes out of the double team. Inside, Choma draws the foul going to be whistled for a check across the body. One of the reasons you want Jackie Wolak involved in the offense is because she's a leading distributor. She has more than double the assists on anyone else in the team. You've got to get her involved, get the ball on her stick. Now Choma with a great chance. Notre Dame's last goal came on a Casey Choma eight meter opportunity. The junior charges in and scores. Casey Choma fires it past Dolce. Exactly the start Notre Dame was looking for in this third quarter. Strong goal. If the defense is going to foul, make the pay on the eight meter. Choma with just a quick couple steps. Her energy is contagious. You can see her fire up her surrounding teammates. Sheer power on this shot. After the Virginia loss, Chris Halfpenny from Notre Dame telling us that Casey Choma got in front of the whole team and said, we are done learning. It's time to go. I want to win. I'm done learning. Because you've learned a lot from the losses, which is ex excellent. But she said, we've had enough of this. It's time It's time to move on. And she's been a, a real leader for this program. Notre Dame has scored on the opening possession of each half. And the last two Irish goals have come from Casey Choma converting on a free position. Battle for the draw control, won by Boston College. Choma still chasing after it. Does that give you a lot of confidence that on the first shot of the half, you beat Dolce, who had those eight amazing saves in the first half? It's huge, because they had, the, we're getting the shots, they were not able to convert on them. Just to start, win possession, and have a successful shot is a big confidence boost. A lot of these teams, they look at each quarter as a, just a, a blank slate. Well, when these two teams met in the regular season back on April 8th, Notre Dame led for most of the game. They were up 11-8 late in that fourth quarter. Boston College came back to 1-12-11. Now the Irish on the reverse. They're the ones trying to launch a second half comeback. Callahan the stop. That seven saves for the junior, Lily Callahan. Excellent save, and Hannah Dorney was able to place that ball in the crease. Heads up play by the defender. So 15 saves between our two goalies, Callahan and Dolce, and only eight goals. So the goalies continue to be the story in this first semifinal. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
you have to wonder back there in cage, Lily Callahan, if it's because Bridget Dehan, who was on the team last year, All-American goalkeeper for Notre Dame, she's coaching up alongside Lauren Benner. She's coaching up Lily Callahan. She drives all the way from Chicago, where she works full-time, beginning of the week can work remote to come to South Bend to help with Goalie World. So it's awesome to have Bridget Dehan. She knows the culture at Notre Dame, and you have to think it's made Goalie World just a little bit stronger. She was telling us here in Charlotte she's taking overseas calls in the morning and then locks in to the game plan late. Notre Dame, two good looks at Cage, couldn't fire at home. Battle for the ball. And it's won by MK Doherty, so it'll stay Irish possession here. Two really good looks there. She and just couldn't convert. Officials just trying to get get something right on the field. Not sure if they're discussing the shot clock. The Kelly Dennis for Notre Dame saying this shot clock should be reset. She thought Dolce got a piece of it. As it stands, shot clock is at 24 seconds, which is still plenty of time. Plenty of time to initiate the offense. Take a look. That goes off her leg. So that should be a reset. Yep, shot clock should reset here. So the shot clock did reset now. Not to the full 60, but to 50, because 10 seconds Allowed. have come off after the save. Here's Wolak. Has yet to attempt a shot today. Notre Dame's leader in scoring this season. Wolak is extremely dangerous attacking from up top, but you can see the double team. Cindy Scales is able to switch onto her, and that's because the, the adjacent player was too close. It's spread out, give her room, make the slides longer, and then Wolak can find you. She's able to draw the eight meter. Wolak. Went for that upper corner, instead got pipe. And Boston College first to the ball. Great explosion off the mark for Wolak. Right off the top crossbar, and Andrea Reynolds for Boston College runs this out. Winning possession back for the Eagles. Wolak's first shot put enough on it to beat Dolce but couldn't squeeze it under the bar. So Boston College ball, a two goal lead. Shane Dolce, nine saves, and she'll take all the help she can get from the pipe behind her. Jen Medjit, two goals to her name today. Splits the double, draws the contact, and now a free position coming for Jen Medjit got to be fearless when you attack to go to cage. Absorb the pressure. Jen Medjid, quick little face dodge. She gets jacked. Defender with the extension of the arms. BC 0 for 2 on free positions. Medjid trying to change it and can't. Lily Callahan to the rescue again. She is keeping this Notre Dame team in it. Eight saves, wow. And all of them have been difficult. All of them. You know, that's an, Jen is such an excellent finisher. She's shooting above 50%. She needs to convert on those. And when you're going to get fouled like that, defenses are going to send all the pressure on you. You've got to make sure you convert. Credit to Callahan. Long clear from Julia Carr. The defender still has it. Tried to find Choma and it's poked away. Seven turnovers for Notre Dame. That one a really costly one. After a big Lily Callahan save, you give it right back to BC. Acacia Walker takes a timeout. Her Eagles team a two goal lead in the third quarter.
The points at a premium in this ACC semifinal between Boston College and Notre Dame Sheehan. We were just saying during the break, both goalies have been fantastic, but the defense in front of Shea Dolce for Boston College, they've been excellent as well. Risen to the challenge, putting the pressure on, whether it's through double teams, just strong ride, the ground balls, relentless, making it tough for Notre Dame to get any transition going. Taking their best player out of the game so far. Wolak just limited to one assist on the day. I did get a little smile out of defensive coordinator Jen Ken in that last huddle. She's happy that they're being aggressive, but she wants them to stay disciplined. That's the biggest part of playing defense. No fouls, and you see them being able to cause those turnovers because they're taking away those passing lanes. But it's a big deal for her to smile. She's usually really tough on them. Now they've caused three turnovers, and Shea Dolce, the freshman goalkeeper, nine saves to her name. Notre Dame just shooting three of 18. That's under 20%. You're not going to win any game shooting like that. Coming into this game, shooting 47%. Most coaches want you about above 50%. That's the gold standard. Boston College on the offensive end, they seem out of rhythm, really relying on that strong defensive effort in their goalkeeper, Dolce. The Eagles scoreless for the opening six minutes of this second half. Good opportunity here coming for Jen Medjid. Boston College's leading scorer both today with two goals and on the season. They're calling the hold defensively on Notre Dame. So when they wrap their stick around, you're not able to restrain your player from getting by you. So they're holding Medjid. Let's see if she can attack. Coming off the eight meters, she's gonna to wanna to get herself a better angle. Creates the angle and scores. Jen Medjid cashes in on the eight meter opportunity. A hat trick for her today. And that's Boston College's first free position goal comes at a clutch time. After going 0 for 3 on the 8 meter, meter Jen Medic, watch her get to the center of the 8 meter. Gets her stick in her strong side, shoots non-stick side, past Callahan, love this. Her body's going to the left, her stick is coming off the right. Very tough for a goalie to have to track that. They're watching your body. She brings her stick to the back side, her top side, and is able to get that one. 71st goal this season. And when this Boston College offense is struggling, you can count on Jen Medjid because she's a veteran player who has played on the biggest of stages, won a national championship for this Eagles team. And she continues to deliver in big time spots. Won a national championship, been to three national championships as a player. And you can't coach that experience. There's being in those big time games, I like how she made the adjustment. She was saved on her last eight meter. Didn't have the best shot. That last attempt, she gets herself a great angle, sees the space, and this, this ball's gonna be a, a hold on Notre Dame, so it's gonna go back to Ryan Smith. We'll get possession. Notre Dame head coach Chris Halfpenny confused to see her on the field there with her arms up. A possession becomes such a premium in this game. When it's low scoring, you have to be extremely efficient late in games and execute. I was just watching Acacia Walker break down something offensively for that next midi line to go in, and she turned to Courtney Weeks and said, you're the boss back there at X, you get it done. She wants to see cuts coming from up top, constant movement, but she's really trustworthy in Weeks back there at X. She was a midfielder that they've moved now into the Charlotte North position, who operates behind at X. Boston College today, just shooting six of 16. Medjid is three of five, but the rest of the team now just three of 12. They have a three goal lead though. Clean check, here comes Notre Dame. Much needed defensive stop. Can Notre Dame handle the pressure? BC putting the pressure on the ride. They want to run out of the trouble. 
Pass to the open players, let the ball to the work, pass over the pressure. That's That was contested. That was a great control by Choma. You've always said you'd rather run out of trouble than pass over it, right? Root, don't poot. You gotta run out of trouble. And that's what you need to be saying in your head. I gotta run, I run, run away. Because once you, if you stop, you're dead meat. They're gonna just get the stick check, cause the turnover. So gotta get moving, get into space, make that easy pass. Here's Jackie Wolak launching into the attack. Still scoreless in this game. Wolak's down on the turf, no call. Notre Dame plays through it. Shanahan got a great look and just can't finish. She lost her goggles too, Jay Jackie Wolak. She's pleading with the ref for a call on the field. Wolak has only attempted one shot today after scoring four goals in the quarterfinal against Virginia. Big reason why Notre Dame won that game. Boston College has been face guarding her for much of this afternoon. Shot clock at 25. Here's Casey Choma. And now a Hearn. She scored the opening goal, has been quiet since. Excellent defense, forcing her to the outside. Ahern can be very dangerous dodging. Curling around, relentless. Ahern could not get the hands free. And that's a turnover. Eight turnovers. And Ahern, one of the best playmakers for Notre Dame, not able to get to the inside. Got to give credit to the BC defenders are forcing the outside. And this is a clinic right now from Boston College's defensive unit. Shay Dolce getting a lot of the credit throughout this game and, and well deserved with her nine saves, but the defense in front of her just limiting Notre Dame's opportunities in this third quarter. Here's Bell Smith. The extra pass, oh, everything but the finish. Cassidy Weeks couldn't put it in the back of the net. Here's McKenna Davis, the lefty, lost her footing. And it's Notre Dame ball. And a yellow card comes out. Dave is going to be out for up to two minutes. Bell Smith doesn't see it, gets it into Cassidy Weeks. She's hoping for the quick stick, but falls right through into Callahan. Another excellent goal contending stop. Dana, any insight on what the yellow card is for? I'm getting some clarification. It's unsportsmanlike contact, uh, conduct number three. Right. Unsportsmanlike conduct. So a big opportunity for Notre Dame, a player up you feel like you have to cash in on this. You do. I mean, this is Notre Dame was not able to, earlier in this game, work the defense. They've had a hard time making plays in settled offense. It's good ball movement so far. Good look for Dennis. Just didn't get a clean shot away. And now Boston College has it. Oh, that's it. That's, Hard check from behind. Melody Welch, one of the unsung heroes on this Boston College team, digging out a big ground ball, and now the Eagles can kill this player up opportunity. Notre Dame, just one of their last 10 attempts. Their shooting has led the, let them down in this semifinal so far. Look at Sydney Scales dodging. Putting on a clinic, we saw her sc score a goal against Virginia, her first goal of the season. 
just a couple nights ago. She might be the next defender that transitions to attack for Boston College. I don't know. She looks pretty good, pretty comfortable on the offensive end. She does. I like how she's always looking behind her. She transitions down the field. She's constantly looking, who's catching up to me? How do I protect my stick? Will be about 10 seconds left on the shot clock after Boston College killed the penalty. This feels like a big missed opportunity for the Irish trying to battle back from three goals down at the semifinal. Back to even strength. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Here's Medjid. The extra pass off the top bar. What a goal that would have been. Everybody laying out. That's the intensity and the effort you love to see in a semifinal. And the BC bench is erupting. That's the heart and hustle. I mean, that's sacrificing yourself for the play. It's amazing. Selling out, getting possession. Both these teams know how important this game is. Want to be peaking at the right time, playing your best lacrosse in the conference tournament. We've had a lot of pipes in this game, too. Yep. Matter of inches. Yep. Under 30 seconds on the shot clock. BC is so well ex executed with their passing plays. They're passing before the person actually gets there. They're so well orchestrated. Another low scoring quarter, but just one goal apiece for both these teams in the third quarter. Each team with 20 shots and both goalies with 10 saves. Now, Notre Dame only three goals in the first 44 minutes of this game. They're going to need to find three more at least in the final 16 just to tie it. This offense needing a spark. Risky shot there. Yeah, that was a congested in the middle. Casey Choma has had two goals for the Irish. Wolak trying to come alive. Battle for the ball. And it's won by Boston College. Great effort. Wolak continues a frustrating day. Boston College with time. 15 seconds left of the third quarter. Martello with 10, shoots, high heat, too much on it. Quick restart. Davis finds Martello, couldn't get her stick through it cleanly. And we head to the fourth quarter. Boston College, the top seed of this tournament, 15 minutes away from advancing to the ACC championship final. ACC Women's Lacrosse Championship is presented by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. On April 8th, these two teams met in the regular season. It was an awesome battle. Notre Dame entered the fourth quarter with the lead in control. They actually led the game 11-8 with just a little bit more than four minutes left. A furious comeback by Boston College. The Eagles won the game on that Cassidy Weeks goal, 12-11. Eagles a 5-0 scoring run to end the game. She and you did that game in South Bend. Now Chris Halfpenny's team, they're trying to reverse it. Now they're the team looking for a fourth quarter comeback. And these are the situations you want your team to be in because you have to overcome these battles. Notre Dame has had a really tough day connecting in the back of the net, finishing on offense. You see 22 shots for Notre Dame, just scoring on three. They've got to be more efficient, got to be more effective. And they want to make sure that they win against this Boston College team. They came to Charlotte to win. All these teams did. And they're not giving up, She And we talked to Chris Halfpenny earlier in the week. She got three coaching outfits. I'm a little disappointed she didn't bring new shoes for this game, but I'm going to let it slide. But they're saving space for the trophy on the plane. So they are ready to play, and they're not going to give up. Identity is their defense. I'd like to see a little bit more production from their offensive end. Well, they need it. Only three goals in the opening 45 minutes of this game. So think about that. 
three goals in three quarters. Now you need at least three goals just to tie this game, and you only have 15 minutes. 15 minutes, both these teams in a great position in terms of postseason play for the NCAA tournament. Winner of the ACC tournament gets an automatic bid. But Boston College and Notre Dame have done excellent resumes that they will make it as an at-large bid if they don't walk away with the trophy. But no one wants to leave Charlotte just yet. Notre Dame has scored two of their three goals on the opening possession of a quarter. They're going to have to find that magic again. Shady Baker really guarding Jackie Wolak. Melanie Welsh on Madison Ahearns. They're trying to take two of the best playmakers out. Shanahan, great back check. Belle Smith to the rescue again. She's doing everything, both sides of the ball. A real two-way midfielder, plays offense and defense, runs the entire length of the field, back and forth. And if you're Notre Dame, Sheehan, you just simply can't afford too many more empty possessions. Got to make sure that you convert on those attempts. And I think the spacing has been the biggest issue for them. It's making their jobs too hard. When the attackers are trying to go to goal, the slides are there. They're allowing the double team to collapse. Each team with only one goal in this second half. Both goalies have been excellent. Defense is dominant. McKenna Davis can't control it, regathers, but stolen away. Here comes Notre Dame. Maybe the Irish can find something in transition. Kelly Dennis in attack mode, shoved to the turf. Free position coming. Notre Dame two for four on their free positions. Well, so that's big. The Irish, they've only scored three goals. Two have come from the eight meters. So this is a huge opportunity. Dennis passes out of it. Who's going to step up offensively for Notre Dame? Maybe it's Casey Choma. Spins into a double team, works through it, still going. And another excellent back check, Sydney Scales. What a play for Sydney Scales. Casey Choma putting her through the spin cycle. And Scales is able to come away with a takeaway check. of those checks are coming from Boston College after they've been beaten, where Notre Dame has a step, and it's come at exactly the right time. And patient, they're not getting whistled for some of those takeaways. Good body positioning, excellent stick work on the checks, to make them clean. <laughs> Shooting space violation. So McKenna Davis is able, gonna be able to draw that foul. Davis been quiet today. The sophomore lefty, scoreless. What a big goal this would be. No, deciding not to go to goal. Both teams opting not to shoot on their free positions. What do you make of that? Well, what if you don't think you have a great angle, if you're not feeling confident with the shot, smart idea to pass outside of it. That's a turnover. The BC, they haven't been able to connect on their passings like they have usually done. They seem to be just a few inches off. And when you're a few inches off on the, the pass, either you're going to miss it and have a turnover like that, or it just causes you to have to 
readjust and it slows down the play, so the flow is not right there. And I think Notre Dame defensively, Sheehan, is doing a good job disrupting some of that flow for the BC offense. Really tight in the hands of Boston College. Agree, they're tight in the hands and they're really not allowing a lot of the feeds inside that we're so used to Boston College making. Well, defense is not the problem. We can agree on that, but how do you wake this offense up? Chris Halfpenny trying to do it, calls a timeout. Can Notre Dame find the offensive punch to come back in this semifinal, trailing by three with under 11 minutes left? Back here in Charlotte, fourth quarter, Notre Dame trailing by three, Sheehan, and this Notre Dame offense just cannot get going. It, their ACC championship life is on the line right now. They gotta find a way to beat this BC defense somehow. They're getting the opportunities, not being able to connect on some key passes in transition. They're shooting three of 23, 13%. Casey Choma trying to make something happen, but look at all the white defenders on her, all the white shirts, and Sydney Scales perfectly executed, one-handed check and the takeaway. Dana, what did Chris Halfpenny have to say in that Notre Dame timeout? It was pretty clear from Notre Dame staff saying to the offense and the defense, do you guys want to go home? Are you going to play? Are you going to show up? We need accountability on the offensive end. And she and you were talking about it. Boston College, a lot of white jerseys around Notre Dame. That means people around Jackie Wolak and Madison Ahern, they're open. So don't ball watch. Help them cut through, make it work, and make the defense for Boston College have to work really hard to cover those slides. Only three goals on 23 shots. Boston College's defense has been dialed in from the start. Their goalkeeper, Shea Dolce, has made 10 saves as well. MK Doherty couldn't get a clean look. Beautiful dodge to the inside, and then just perfect defense. Matching stick on stick, Bellsmith playing without goggle. Whoa! That was overly aggressive. A green card being issued, I believe, to Bell Smith for playing for the goggles. Is it to Bell Smith for not playing with the goggles? I'm not sure how they came off her head, but if they were as a result of the foul. Let's see this. Oh, so it looks like it was her own player, maybe, that. So that's Melanie yes, Welsh. Yes, it's own? Melanie Welsh, her own teammate, swiping them off. So this is going to be Notre Dame ball. And there was no yellow card on that check to Bell Smith no. afterwards. Wow. You saw it on the left side of your screen. I, I mean, I am shocked. I actually think that Boston College player, I mean, the Notre Dame player was jogging off the field thinking she was going to get carded. Instead, a green card issued to Bell Smith for playing without the goggles. Well, and it was Boston College ball. And now it's Notre Dame ball. So a huge call. Huge swing of events. And now Notre Dame will be up for a player for up to a minute as a result of the green card. Green card for playing without goggles. Green card for playing without goggles. So she gets checked in the head. And you hear Acacia Walker, but she got checked in the head. But that was by her own player. So that, that should not have been a card. I am surprised that we did not see a card issue for that check. And Notre Dame gives it away. Sometimes the ball doesn't lie. Boston College back with possession, albeit a player down. But that is a big missed opportunity by Notre Dame. A costly turnover right on the end line. Unforced. It, it's getting very aggressive. The officials, they, they need to rein in some of this play. So warning right now being issued to Notre Dame for making sure they give the proper spacing. Well, they have to be careful, because you get the feeling a yellow card is coming, and that's something Notre Dame can't afford in the fourth quarter, trailing by three. The time is not on the Irish's side. Now, under 10 minutes in regulation, they've only managed three goals in the first 50 minutes of this game, and if they're gonna tie it, they need to find three in the final nine minutes and 30 seconds. Have not scored since 40 seconds into this second half. Back 
back to even strength. Shot clock at 30. Recall three seconds on Notre Dame. That's when a defensive player is in that eight meter for more than three seconds without guarding a player within a stick's length. Boston College just one for four on free positions today. Lily Callahan has been outstanding in cage for Notre Dame. Ten saves. One on one with Kayla Martello. Charges in and scores. Kayla Martello fires it past Callahan, and it's 7 3 Boston College. BC gets their second eight meter goal of the afternoon. Kayla Martello, picture perfect, explodes right off the eight meter, couple quick steps in, shoots high to low. The Boston College goal. That's a big time goal. A lot of aggressiveness going. The emotions are high. BC remains composed, is able to draw the foul and convert. The first goal for Boston College in nearly 15 minutes. And it comes from Kayla Martello. Very rare that you could go scoreless for almost a quarter and extend your lead. <laughs> I mean, this is, we thought this was going to be an explosion of two offenses. Some of the great scorers in the ACC. And it's been a battle. Goaltenders have been phenomenal. Ten, C, ten saves for each keeper. Six calls turnovers for Boston College. Big draw for Notre Dame. The Irish, a mountain to climb. Trailing by four, they've only managed three goals to this point in the game. Now, still plenty of time if they can turn things around. And it's really just, they need to just wipe the slate clean, start attacking, create space, go back to the basics. Two of Notre Dame's three goals have come on free position, so maybe getting fouled in the eight meter could be the spark the Irish need here down the stretch. Choma, she's got two of Notre Dame's three goals. On a mission! That is exactly what Notre Dame's been looking for. No! Wave off the goal. They say Kristen Shanahan was in the crease. They're gonna go to replay for this. This is a good goal to replay because was she pushed to the crease? Was it by her own initiation? So ball was in the back of the net by Kristen Shanahan. A great individual effort. Was she in the crease and was she pushed? Okay, so the shot was initiated outside of the crease. However, she does land in the crease. I don't see her being pushed inside there. And so what we've seen all week long with the replay that would be considered no goal. So it would stand with what the officials saw on the field. Now, if she was pushed, which she was calling for, the goal would stand. The rule is you are able to have your stick follow through on a shot as an uh, attacker. Your stick can follow through, your feet and body cannot go into the circle. Really, the question is, was there enough contact initiated by Sydney Scales to warrant a push? Because clearly she did land in. Well, you heard it. Call on the field stands, 
And from what we saw, I think that's a good call. Shanahan drives to Cage. And then the shot is released and falls into that goal circle area with her foot. You're not able to enter into the crease area. Your momentum cannot carry you in. Just a note, Sheehan, that was not called by Chris Haffany. It was actually official media review. So not called by either of the coaches. So Notre Dame still has that one timeout. Boston College with two. Under eight minutes remaining in this game. Frustration starting the boiling over on that Notre Dame bench. I like, I like the officials that they try to get that right because that would have been a real game-changing goal. So you want to make sure you get that call right. Officials made the right call in the field and after review can confirm that. Tough break for Notre Dame. So I think what's key with now that being you, games using review, you've got to initiate your drive to cage a little bit further and make sure that your momentum does not carry you into that goal circle. Can't step into it. Notre Dame causes the turnover. You're going to see this Irish team really ramp up the pressure on the ride. You saw it there. Now can they convert on the offensive end? This is what has held them back all game long. Madison Ahern. She had the first goal of this game, 66 seconds into it, and has been shut out since. Madison Ahern and Casey Choma are the leading goal scorers for Notre Dame. Under seven minutes remaining in regulation. Notre Dame playing on just one day's rest. How do you find it late in a fourth quarter, Sheehan, to come back by four? Certainly that won't help. Hunter Roman anticipating the play. The BC defense really reading what Notre Dame is going to do. 13th turnover for Notre Dame. Excellent job, the anticipation for Roman. Hot and humid out there in Charlotte. One day turnaround, is that wearing on this Notre Dame team as they try and launch a comeback? You know, it's just hard. They haven't really been able to get things in sync. Started off the day shooting cold, haven't been able to change things, but what I'm most surprised about, Casey Choma is, is a, a great initiator. She's usually a, more of a finisher inside the eight meter. She's doing a lot of the dodging. She wants to win. So you, want, you do want the ball in her stick. I'd like to see more out of Jackie Wolock and Madison Ahern, who do an excellent job dodging a cage and for creating space, but then some costly turnovers. Something to watch too, she and Madison Ahern is being face guarded by Melanie Welch, which that is a great matchup of athleticism. Welsh, one of the best defenders on this BC team. Boston College being very patient. They've not played a perfect offensive game, but I think they're managing the clock well. Medjid, another great attack, everything but the finish. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Notre Dame needs a stop. Weeks goes to goal and scores. Cassidy Weeks. She may have just sealed the spot in the ACC final for Boston College, an 8-3 lead. Watch how much time Cassie Weeks has to go to work, get to the center, right between the legs of Callahan. Gets her stick free, good placement. Weeks, one of the most consistent players for this Eagles team, Acacia Walker telling us. Loves her heart and hustle. She and you talked about the patience. Well, that play started by Kayla Martello cutting through, and they moved really high on the 15. So Cassidy Weeks did have a lane to dodge, and it distracted some of the Notre Dame defense. My dad always used to say, when you see their ponytail, go to cage. Turn their back and, and get into space. I mean, that's so key. As a, as a, when you are off ball, you want to make sure you're, you're looking at where the cuts are, where the seams in the defense. And when you see your defender ball watching, you're turning away, you cut to space. Big draw control win for Boston College. 
They've got to kill the final five minutes of regulation here, leading by five goals. Interesting note, the fewest goals ever scored in an ACC tournament game is three. That was by Duke in the 2012 semifinals playing Maryland. Notre Dame has been shut out since the 14-21 mark in the third quarter. I mean, there's good defense, and then there's what we've seen from Boston College today. See how spread out Boston College is. I think Notre Dame needs to go in attack mode defensively. Start pressuring out. They need to come away with a takeaway. Got to get the ball back in their stick. They don't want Boston College just to let the clock wind down. I think they pressure out, force BC to go to Cage. They need possession back. Send the double teams early, make the pass. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. Another goal here for the Eagles would be a backbreaker. Weeks again. Cassidy Weeks back to back goals. And that one will surely send Boston College to the ACC Championship Final. Such patience, such great awareness of where the defense is. This gets set up from a foul from behind, Cassie Weeks. She does, she's making herself increasing the angle, doesn't take that first shot, it says she makes the defense have to pay and move. Cuts to the center, she's so, so shifty. Good by number 12. I love the quote that Acacia Walker gave us last ACC championship. She said, we've never been good enough to win an ACC championship. In fact, the only ACC championship that Boston College owns is 2007 by men's soccer. So that trophy was at practice all last week. It was on a table at center field, so the players had to walk by it. You could look at it, but you couldn't touch it. And she and you say this all the time, whatever it takes to motivate your team. Well, they seem to love that mantra. Like they know we, Charlotte North, part of our team, has been talking about. Oh, we made it. She made it clear we were not good enough to win. They won the national championship, which is a monumental effort. Been to five national straight national championship games, but not been able to win this ACC championship. And it's something that's been on their list. Got to have those goals at the beginning of the season. Could this be the year that Boston College finally gets over the hump in the ACC? Acacia Walker's team just three minutes and 33 seconds away from clinching a spot in the final. You take a look at the last five years, they've been so close. But as Acacia said, they've never been good enough to win it and to deliver some hardware back to Chestnut Hill. It'd be the only the second, as Dana said, only the second ACC title in the history of the school. Hard to believe with so many great athletic programs. But this Boston College team, they lost to Denver 8-13 to back on March 19th. Since then, they've been on a win streak. Come from behind win, five straight goals to beat Notre Dame in the regular season in April. Another come from behind win to beat Syracuse just a week ago. They seem to be peaking at the right time. People were ready to count them out back in March. Played North Carolina down in Chapel Hill. They lost 16 to five and they had looked like a completely different team from that team in March to now. You look at their season comparison. First nine games, 14.1 goals. Last eight, 17. Today, all about the defense, though. I mean, this is no one would have suspected this low-scoring affair. Defense has, has had the highlight reel plays. And Boston College has added four straight goals. Casey Choma scored right at the start of the third quarter to make it 5-3. And then Boston College 
So good on the defensive end, just completely clamped down on Notre Dame. A frustrating offensive performance continues for the Irish as we tick under three minutes to play in regulation. Coming up in our second semifinal, it will be Syracuse in North Carolina. We've talked about Boston College looking for the program's first ACC championship. A big reason why is that North Carolina's won the last six straight. Charge call here gives the ball back to Notre Dame. There's not enough time to come back from six goals in the final 230. They'll try until the final whistle. In between games here on ACC Network, you'll be with Taylor Tannenbaum and Charlotte North. Notre Dame battling. Where has that been for the first 57 minutes of this game? The offense comes alive. First goal in 27 minutes and 30 seconds for Notre Dame. A long scoreless drought that's likely cost them the semifinal. Finally able to make a connection. Jane McAvoy gets to the inside, splits the double team. You know, just coming off of this quarterfinal game, Notre Dame with a hard fought win over UVA. 15 goals they put up. Jackie Wolak, four goals, three assists in that contest. Casey Choma, four goals, one assist. Never were able to get into a rhythm. What's crazy about that, Sheehan, is they started off that UVA game on a 9-3 run. They haven't even scored nine goals yet. That's a great point. But one of the things that Notre Dame has been known for is their fast right. starts. How much they've attacked so hard, and it's been sometimes it hard for them to maintain the lead. But weren't able to get that quick start. And really, the shooting woes. Four goals on 25 shots for Notre Dame. Final two minutes here, they need five goals. And they've only scored four to this point on the game. It would be a Herculean comeback and then some. Casey Choma not giving up, got fouled. Choma just two of seven today, both goals coming on free positions. Ahern. Can't collect, Shea Dolce way out of her cage, but scoops up the ball. Timeout taken by Boston College with possession. Just a minute and 35 seconds away from securing that spot in the final. They will await the winner of North Carolina and Syracuse. What's the quick preview on that matchup, Shia? I can't wait to see that battle. You know, just about a week ago, those two teams met in the regular season. Syracuse came away with the win. North Carolina didn't shoot well that day. Easily could have won that game. And Syracuse, they they look beatable for so much of the season. They were head above, head above heels, everybody else. But the gap has narrowed. Really excited for that matchup. North Carolina looked so good at that quarterfinal against Clemson, won it 16 to six. This team just seems to catch fire during this ACC championship. They've won it six straight times going for seven. They've had the upper hand in the ACC conference. Won the national championship last year with a perfect season. But is this Syracuse's year? With uh, number one much of the season. And yeah. So they were taken down by this Boston College team. You mentioned that regular season meeting a couple of weeks ago in Chapel Hill. Just so many weapons on this Syracuse team. Megan Tyrell, obviously the headliner. They could be just so many ways. Emma Ward has been excellent with distributing the ball. That was a, a really hard fought game. Tyrell led the scoring with two goals and four assists. In 
between the conclusion of our game here at Syracuse or North Carolina. We've got Taylor Tannenbaum and Charlotte North here in Charlotte. So Boston College, this is easy. Just a game of keep away. Leading by five. You can just run this clock out. Gonna call a charge. Didn't look like a charge to me, but. That's gonna go to Notre Dame's ball. So excellent pressure trying to get possession back. Fortunate to have this five goal cushion. That would have been a costly turnover in a one goal game. And if you're Acacia Walker, you do want to clean that up because that's a game situation where later in the NCAA tournament or maybe even Sunday in the ACC final, that could cost you. That can cost you. Those, these are the pressure situations you want. You can do it a lot in practice, but oftentimes your, your weaknesses aren't exposed until it's in a real game and you see the real effects of this. It's Boston College is offsides. We're seeing more and more of that, those offsides with under a minute left, the team that has the lead. Sometimes it can just be a matter of miscounting. Other times it can be a strategic foul, causing a stoppage of play. If you get away for a little bit, then you're playing with an extra person on defense. Dolce, another save. The freshman has been phenomenal. That is 11 to her name. Smart move to pass it back. You can utilize the entire field. No certain area you need to keep the ball in. And, and Boston College sideline getting ready to celebrate. The Eagles on the back of an incredible defensive effort. A commanding 9-4 win. And they are soaring to the ACC championship final. Three goals for Jen Medjid, two for Kayla Martello, and two for Cassidy Weeks. Those are the highlights on offense, but defensively, they kept a very good Notre Dame team to four goals. 11 saves for the freshman, Say Dolce. Boston College headed to the ACC championship final. Here's their head coach, Acacia Walker, with Dana Boyle. Coach, there's defense, and then there's holding Notre Dame to four goals. How did your defense come out so hot? I think they um, were like 110% on every effort like running through every single 1v1 to try to get a stick on every shot. I mean, we must have deflected, you know, five or six shots, um, which is really hard to do because of how fast they are. Um, but I'm really proud of them. They followed the game plan. You're going to championship Sunday. What can you take away from this game to build for Sunday? Uh, we got to have more composure. We got to have better ball movement. Uh, and I think a little bit more communication as the fatigue sets in. But this is about digging deep and, and finding one more win. Congrats, coach. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You take a look at our ACC Women's Lacrosse Championship bracket presented by Ally. Boston College in that championship game. They await the winner of Syracuse in North Carolina. What a game that should be coming up next on ACC Network until the start of that game. It's all ACC with Taylor Tannenbaum and Charlotte North.